Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So a week or so ago we put out a video on a GM uh, titled, you know, GM gross evap leak, what to do when it's not the gas cap. Uh, so that video is pretty cool, check it out if you haven't. And right now we've got a 2011 Ford Escape with a 3 liter in it and it has a PO456 so it's going to be an evap small leak. Now this system is a little bit different because it uses a natural vacuum leak detection or a key off you know vacuum leak detection or evap leak detection I should say uh, so the system works a little bit different of course it does do some gross leak you know gas cap checks with the car running but the primarily the, the small leak uh, test is done with the key off through natural vacuum leak detection uh, if you want a fantastic explanation on that Wells Electronics uh, Mike Becker there uh, he does a lot of videos on that. I'll put links to their channel below. I'll make a pop up in the screen on the end screen and all that. So check out their stuff if you really want some just some really great EVAP videos. They're the best ones I can direct you to. I'm going to show you a quick tip on this one. Uh, what kind of plagues these escapes and it's often kind of something overlooked because when we think EVAP leak, you know, particularly with this capless fuel system Ford uses, you know, we're going to think uh, at least here in the Northeast. Uh, you know in Rust Belt we're thinking you know that filler neck, you know, we're thinking a physical leak in the vapor system Something visible anyways, you know, that we're gonna hook our smoke machine. We're gonna find this leak and away we go uh, These have a problem that can be somewhat intermittent and somewhat difficult to diagnose And I'm gonna show you a few little tricks on these as far as what happens how to diagnose it and you know the most likely cause There's a copy of our code now. That's in the memory uh, now on these, just to make sure it's kind of not a fluke, uh, what we'll do is we can check pending codes, make sure that it actually has, you know, a pending code for this problem. I'm going to make darn sure my key's on. Sounds like it is. Uh, yep, it is. Let's see. Memory code. Why did that just pop back up? So we're going to pending codes, and we also have a pending code for it too, so it is something that's kind of happening, you know, at least two times in a row. Uh, let me show you what's up. But first I'm going to start showing you what's wrong. So right here is what's wrong and it is the canister purge valve or the you know the purge solenoid that sits up on the engine. Now on a natural vacuum leak detection it's very important, 100% important that, that these have the ability to seal. Uh, so this is going to sit down inside the intake manifold uh, and what will happen you know at a you know a given amount of time after the keys off and all these other criteria is you know ambient temperature, fuel temperature, the ECM will actually command this open, it'll vent all the pressure out of the tank, you know, it'll, it'll close the uh, purge solenoid again, and then it's going to monitor the amount of decay as the fuel cools off and actually creates a vacuum in the fuel tank. So the problem being, if once it cycles this purge solenoid, you know, open the close, it assumes it's closed, and you know, Bob's your uncle. If it's not closed, guess what? you all of a sudden have an evap leak. Uh, so I've unhooked the purge hose from it that goes back to the canister and I've installed a vacuum gauge. What we'll do is we'll start it up and theoretically with this unplugged, or currently it's plugged in, uh, we should have no vacuum. Uh, you know, technically it should be closed, which you'll find often is the case. Uh, so you keep your uh, vacuum gauge on there you let the engine run for you know several minutes see if it builds vacuum it doesn't you know at that point you assume the purge solenoid is good but on these Fords what I find is the best practice is to cycle the purge solenoid and chances are it'll stick so let's go ahead and start this little guy up See right now, the purge solenoid is actually working. Ready to zero. We'll get the setup over here. Alright, so we're gonna pop into some function tests. We're gonna go output controls right to the purge valve. I'm going to move that scan tool so we can see it next to the vacuum gauge. Uh, I know you can't really see the screen on it too good, but it's not super important. Uh, what I'm going to do, we're going to turn this test on. I'm going to toggle it at like, say, 10%. We can see the vacuum went right down the manifold vacuum, like 18 inches. But now we're going to put it at zero. 
So theoretically, the turd solenoid is turned off at this point. So I'm going to unhook, we're going to bleed the vacuum from it, hook the gauge back up, and you can see it did not close. Now, to make sure that we're not getting the electrical command, I'm going to unplug it. So the turd solenoid is now unplugged. Look at that. We've still got full manifold vacuum simply from turning it on uh, to back off. This guy's moved around there, so like I said, it is unplugged. We still have full manifold vacuum on it. We'll do the same thing we did on the old GM. Give her a little whack, and away we go. So you either need a screwdriver or a new purge solenoid. Sometimes you can actually give them a little tap and get them to turn on. Not the case here, or I'm not hitting it hard enough anyway, so we'll plug it back in. You know, no manifold vacuum. I'll bump it up 10%. I'll shut it back off. You know, normally when the car's running, you know, the purge solenoid's gonna be active. You know, the fuel heats up uh, to reduce emissions. Uh, so it only makes sense that, you know, eventually it's gonna stick when it's shut off. So I'll take it unplug it again, completely unplug. And we got full manifold vacuum. Here we're going to whack. Bleed the vacuum off it. And there we go. Bob's your uncle. Needs a purge solenoid. So I guess the main point of this video would be uh, if you get one of these in and it's your habit to check the purge solenoid to see if it's leaking, uh, I've seen some of these failures on these Fords where you actually have to cycle it two or three times to catch it in the moment when it actually glitches. So uh, make sure that you're, you know, testing the purge solenoid, particularly on, you know, NVLD systems, uh, cycling it a few times to make sure it's not sticking. Particularly if you, let's say you smoke it and you're like, ah, you know, I don't see a leak, but it's got a hard code, it's got a pending code, so you know it's legit. Uh, make sure you're cycling that purge solenoid, you know, multiple times to try to create the fault. You know, don't. Don't sit there and smash on it with a hammer until you actually, you know, make it faulty. But uh, these are super common on these. So I'm going to take and swap it out. We'll retest this one. I'll show you how a good one works. Um, looks pretty simple. Just two bolts. Take two bolts out. Put it in the intake. Take two bolts up. Uh, factory spec, of course, as usual. So I'll swap it out. We'll rerun through the test. Show you what a good one looks like and move on. All right. So we've got our new perch solenoid installed. I took the old one out. Good habit to do is... Um, you know, when you get these out, tap them like down on a white piece of paper, make sure it's not full of uh, charcoal uh, from the charcoal canister because it starts sucking up kibbles and bits out of the canister. Well, you got bigger problems. So what we're going to do is we will reinstall our vacuum gauge. Kind of stick that down there where you can see it. Hopefully, I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Alright, so we'll go back to our Output controls, purge valve. Something that where you guys can see it. Hopefully, you can see that. Start the test. Bumper up there's 10%. You can see how that, you know, that duty cycle brought that needle up, kind of jittery. Where before it was like open, close. Pick it back to zero. We'll bleed the vacuum off it, and you can see we'll lay right back to zero. I'll bump it back up 10%. Back manifold vacuum. I'll turn it back off, lead the vacuum off it like we did before. Put it back up. Bob's your uncle. Easiest way for us to verify and repair after that, you know, we know we, we got it because we saw the fault. But I'm actually running it through a small leak test right now, the scan tool. Uh, I use the bi-directional controls. So it's doing its thing right now. Test takes a little while. Uh, had to be able to run a little bit. to do it but we did get to see you know what's happening so uh, I guess that's it so we'll leave it to that guys uh, like I say I wasn't able to run the small leak test whether it's a problem with the virus or not so it was unable to achieve you know engine RPM uh, I'm confident about our repair uh, being that it's a super common issue with these uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to bother trying to bypass the soak time and, you know, running a uh, drive cycle to get the monitors to set. The small leak on these can take days and, you know, depending on ambient temperature, it can take weeks and sometimes over a month uh, to actually run that test, the key off portion of it anyways. So 
Uh, anyhow, we'll leave it at that. Uh, I know it's a short video. I hope you guys enjoyed it anyways. Maybe gather this quick tip. It is Tuesday, so it's quick tip Tuesday. Actually, I think today's Monday, but um, whatever. Either case, uh, find us on our socials, questions, comments, put them in the comment box below. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.